I was wrong. I do have one thing to vlog today. Um, this behind me is a JCM 900 dual reverb and it belongs to my best friend's father-in-law. Um, he doesn't know what's wrong with it. It lives in like an old rock and roll man space, rehearsal space. Um, they smoke in there, drink in there, like pretty much anything you can think of. Um, so like there's really no telling uh, what's wrong with it. It has tons of like uh, cigarette smoke in there and things like that. So it's like a true piece of like rock and roll gear. Um, so I'm, I'm not like an amp repair person, but I know enough to kind of get by with my stuff. Um, I'm not sure. I know my, so the guy whose it is, he's like, primarily a vocalist so I don't know if he knows anything about amps like it could just be a fuse could be the tubes really don't know the tubes are definitely old um, the preamp tubes are old and they're they're most certainly mismatched there's fender tubes in there there's uh, those what are they JJ whatever um, and yeah I think before I start working like on it and trying to trace what the issue is, I am gonna clean it. So you know, I, I can't I can't work in it with it being like dusty and stuff. I really, for me to be at peace with it, it, it needs to be cleaned up. So we're gonna do that. Let's see if we can get in there good enough. Let's try that. Yeah, so I'm sure you can tell it is pretty dusty. Um, you know, it looks like you would assume it would look like uh, with it being smoked in. So first order of business will, will be to get the chassis out and uh, let's move on that. I'm actually, so the only like, I have like a little class five Marshall now, but I haven't owned a Marshall head since um, high school. I don't think I have ever taken one apart. Um, I can see a name here. This is not the name of the owner. So this one's definitely been through through the ringer a little bit, maybe. Yeah, there it goes. Um. need to pull the tubes but I, really, I really would like to use it with the tubes first um, it's not it's not as bad as I thought it would be, um, really. Let me get these plugs out of this reverb tank. Yeah, that's it's not nearly as rough as I thought it would be. I do need to cut that. If you've watched any length of uh, my vlogs or keep an eye on my feed, I'm in no way like an OCD person, but I do like order. Not that there's anything wrong with um, being obsessive compulsive. 
I wish in a lot of ways I was a little more obsessive compulsive, but I do like things orderly. So yeah, that's not that bad. I mean, it's got some dust and cobwebs, but not terrible. So uh, now let's get to cleaning. If you uh, don't have a paintbrush in your arsenal for uh, guitars and amps, you really need one. You can brush like on the pit guard under the strings. You can brush brush the knobs off. Really invaluable. Just kind of doing a light cleaning here um, before I pull the tubes. I want to clean it off before I mess with it too much. And I really don't want to pull the tubes without troubleshooting it. It's just a quick wipe off, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I think we'll be in good enough shape to start messing with it. I'm gonna check the few, I'm actually gonna tater top. So, stop, stop. We got a kitten recently and he kind of uh, we have two dogs, so his litter box is up in my shop so that, you know, the dogs have a harder time getting to it. And that means he is living up here with me when I'm working quite a bit. He's pretty nice, but you know how kittens are just into everything. All right, I'll clean that after. So, um... I got that done. Now, I'm gonna check the fuses. If I can find my flathead. There it is. It has three fuses. definitely blown. That one's definitely blown as well. Okay, well, I kind of expected that. Let's check the main fuse. That one is not blown. That looks good. So two out of three are blown. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these tubes. I have to order, um, I'm gonna have to order fuses anyways. I don't keep fuses. Um, 
I just haven't really had a need to. Um, I keep automotive fuses, but I think these are like the uh, quarter inch by inch and a quarter inch and a sixteenth or something like that. And I have not kept those. So without the fuses, I can't really check anything. So I may as well, you know, get it real clean. We've got JJ tubes, fender tubes, all kinds of stuff going on here. That's a Mesa tube from 2010. Another Mesa. Okay. EL34. It obviously hasn't been working for a while because there's just so much dust buildup on top of them. Um, I guess I don't know that for a fact. But in my opinion, like, those tubes get so hot that they're going to burn dust on them. Um, I don't think there would be that much dust buildup on it. I could be wrong. I want to see. Well, I shouldn't need it. it should be all right. I want to see if there's anything um, that stands out. I see some burnt resistors here, like very clearly burnt resistors. Um, It appears to be original. But yeah, those, there's two resistors here and I don't even know. They're burnt past the point of me um, being able to identify them. So I'll have to look at a schematic. But the inside looks better than the outside. I can tell you that. A little bit dirty, but nothing crazy. So next thing to do Okay. I've got Four, four burnt resistors. Okay, so there's burnt resistors on the two um, fuses, the smaller fuses. And it looks like, or right next to them, and it looks like they are um, the resistors for the LEDs, which is kind of weird. They're definitely the same value resistors throughout. Um, and I don't know what that value is, but I can at least tell, like, with the, uh, the resistor code, the four burnt resistors are the same value, which is kind of odd. Yeah, everything else looks good. So, yeah, dig into a schematic. Um, I'll clean this shell up and then uh, 
wait for fuses to get here and I'll do my best to bring you along on the rest of it. I've been really fortunate with my amps. Um, I don't change tubes. I don't really do anything with them. I don't know if it, just like the hours I play them, it doesn't call for it. But I really haven't had any issues. And I mean, I'm running them, most of the time I'm running them, you know, well into breakup. Not at 10, but like seven to eight. And I really haven't had any issues. Um, so yeah, this is kind of fun. I'm not, this isn't something I have to do very often. So, um, I will have to pull the board for sure to get, actually be able to get a solder connection. It, it, I mean, these are connected It appears that's part of the uh, just the, the power. So I don't know. Everything here looks good. So back here is going to need some work. Yeah. All right. I'm rambling now. So I'll clean up the uh, the head. A little bit while I've already got my gloves on and then you know wait for parts to come in and I'll I guess there will be like a part two stay still So, um, kind of like the handyman's trick. I got this pretty clean with rubbing alcohol. But if you really, really, really want to get into the cracks and clean something, WD-40 is your best friend. Um, obviously, don't like soak it. But there's not a single material that I've used this on. Um, other than like cloth or something like that, obviously something like that you couldn't put it on. But like Tolex, um, vinyl, I mean pretty much anything. If you really want to get it clean, WD-40 works better than anything that I've ever seen. I mean it just plain works, you know. It's one of those magic cleaners. I'm going to go ahead and take this handle off because I'm unable to get where I want to go. Just take, okay, that's not matching. Um, it's okay. This Tolex minus the rips. As far as, you know, like Tolex, you get that um, just dusty and grimy kind of stuff after a while. Um, other than the rips, I think like a good wipe down with WD-40 and then uh, kind of wipe off the residue. It should be looking pretty new again. Let's 
something I've done quite a bit. I have great results. I haven't had any negative results. So I will keep doing it. Okay, where did that screw go? That screw is not even biting, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it in there. It's not really doing anything. I don't like, after looking at this Marshall, I really do not like how the, um, like this top vent and the corner guards are nailed. I don't see a point in that. It just seems kind of lazy on uh, Marshall's end to me. Because, I mean, you could always add screws, I guess, but it doesn't make for like an easily repairable amp or easily replaceable parts. And, I mean, any kind of any amp that you gig with, you're going to need to eventually replace those parts. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So to make them kind of impossible to do so is a little bit irritating to me. Like wear and tear doesn't bother me, but certain things like the vent and corner guards, they serve like a pretty clear purpose. So if they are broken, you need to replace them. It's not like one of those things where it's like, oh, it, it looks good, it's vintage. Like, it does serve a purpose. So replacing it is kind of important. And the, sometimes it would be nice if the designers thought about that from like the consumer standpoint like these maybe these were added later i don't know but these the skids on the bottom are screwed in they're replaceable and those probably matter the least all right i think that's good enough um, now it just needs to be like the WD-40 won't leave like a really oily residue it'll kind of wipe off um, naturally but just kind of good to make sure nothing that isn't supposed to be there is there just kind of give it a wipe off and that looks ten times better than it did with just the alcohol. Doesn't look new, but it looks clean. One little spot down here. And you know how like if you bump Tolex into like a wall or something, it'll leave paint? You know, it's not like a scuff, it's just a little bit of paint gets left behind in the texture, things like that. Um, WD-40 will also wipe that off. Should you wish for it to. That's probably the best it's looked in a number of years. I can tell you that. Okay, just found a date. It appears, yep, so this is from 1990. So this amp is older than I am. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna end this here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pull anything until I have the parts to replace it with. Um, so yeah, we'll end it here. Clean this mess up, get back to the day.